So we've seen how cycle notation can help us to simplify a product of two non-disjoint cycles of permutations. What I want to do next is give you a bit of a bonus and look at how we can also use matrix multiplication to represent the objects and how they combine together in a symmetric group. This is an important example not just for the sake of worrying about symmetric groups, but it turns out is part of a larger picture of how algebraists can study groups by representing their objects as matrices and representing the group operation as multiplication of those matrices. And I want to use this approach to study this product of three non-disjoint cycles, 3, 7, 3, 4, 5, 3, 7. So how does it work? Well, a permutation can be represented by an n by n matrix. If I'm permuting n symbols, I can represent that permutation via multiplication by an n by n matrix. Which matrix? Well, to find out which matrix represents a given permutation, all I do is take an identity matrix and permute the rows, or equivalently permute the columns, according to the permutation uh, that I'm trying to work with. So, for example, 3, 7, that's a two cycle. To represent that as a matrix product, I start with an 8 by 8 identity matrix, 8 by 8 because I'm working in a, in a, a set of permutations of 8 symbols. And I'll just take the rows of this identity matrix and permute them according to this permutation. So I'll take the third row and I'll make it the new seventh row. And I'll take the seventh row and make it the new third row. So just trade places between the third row and the seventh row. And I get a matrix that looks like this. So this big giant 8x8 eight eight matrix looks almost like the identity matrix, and the only difference uh, is that its 3rd and 7th rows are permuted. Why this works, by the way, is that if I were to take this and multiply it by some column vector of 8 things, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, let's say, if I were to do this product, matrix vector product, then what would end up happening? when I did out this product, is that A and B would stay put because they're just being multiplied by these uh, unit basis vectors. But C would end up in position 7, because the 1 ends up in that uh, column right there. And then the G would end up back in position 3 because of what's happening in this row. And so the net result is that I would get exactly the permutation that we're purporting to represent here. So the G ends up there. Uh, D, E, and F stay put, and then C ends up in position 7. So that's why this is such an effective way of representing a permutation, is now this matrix multiplication captures exactly what's happening in the permutation that we're trying to study. And that's super good news because it also implies that multiplying these matrices together will give us the same thing as composing the two functions together. In other words, taking one permutation followed by the other. So if I want to know how to simplify this product of permutations, if I represent each one of them by a matrix, and then I form the matrix product, then I will get exactly the product of permutations that I'm looking for by multiplying those matrices. So I have 3, 7 going on in both the first and last factor of this product. 3, 4, 5, meanwhile, is the factor here in the middle. That I'm going to represent by an 8 by 8 identity matrix, in which the third row of that identity matrix has moved to the fourth position, the fourth row has moved to the fifth position, and the fifth row back to the third position, the other rows remaining put. So if I want to know how to simplify this product of permutations, I just need to multiply these three matrices together. That's something that I would much rather not do by hand, because I would have to do hundreds and hundreds of products uh, to figure that out. Instead, let's borrow some technology. I'm going to use the Sage computer algebra system to carry out this matrix product and figure out what it is. If you haven't had the pleasure to use Sage before, it is well worth your time to learn. Uh, it is a free open source uh, computer algebra system that you can use both in the cloud online, as I'm about to do, uh, or you can also install it on local machines. Uh, to just do this one computation, it's okay if we use the cloud servers for this. So what I'll do is I'll just tell Sage about these matrices I'm trying to multiply. There we go and then ask it to carry out the product A times B times A. Click to evaluate that. Even Sage takes a while sometimes to do big matrix products, and I get the matrix that we see right here. So this is the matrix that's going to represent the product of these three cycles that I'm trying to simplify. And so here's that matrix. Now I just have to figure out what product of cycles, what permutation, this matrix is telling me. So I'll just look at which rows are not in the place that we would expect them to be in the identity matrix. 
The fourth row, for example, we should have seen, if it were the identity matrix, the 1 would have been in the fourth position. Instead, uh, the 1 is over here. So row 4 has clearly been moved. Where did it move to? It moved into the fifth row instead. So 4 goes to 5. But that also means that the fifth row is out of place. Row 5 ends up here in position 7. So 5 goes to 7. And then the seventh row is out of place. We find it back here in position 4. So what permutation are we talking about? We're talking about the permutation which has cycle notation 4, 5, 7. So there is an example of how to use matrix representation of a permutation to figure out how to compose permutations one with another. And this is, again, a powerful tool, not just for studying permutations, but as it turns out, we can use this tool to study finite groups more generally uh, in the discipline of what's called representation theory. So we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of this chapter of videos uh, where we talk about Cayley's theorem, in which we find out that all finite groups are secretly living inside of some group of permutations.